In 2019, I purchased my first off-road capable vehicle, our 19 Sahara. Having been a car guy for years, I did what I normally do and joined a forum to learn specifics about my Sahara and off-roading it. Trying to learn more, I discovered watching YouTube. It basically became my primary form of TV entertainment, discovering popular channels about off-roading, overlanding, camping, hiking, and other forms of travel. I saw a great video about Glacier National Park and decided I need to start working on my bucket list of places my wife and I want to go. We started planning a trip in January of 2020 that included Glacier National Park, Banff in Canada, Montana, Magruder Corridor, and many other places, but then COVID canceled our plans. In July of 2021, we were much better prepared and eager to get on the road. Everything was relatively new to us, camping, camping with a baby, two teenagers in tow, and packing two Jeeps with everything we needed for three weeks. It was a lot. Throwing that I bought an action camera to try to capture these memories along with a microphone, a floating grip to mount it to, in case I dropped it in the water, and that I'd never done any kind of videography other than home movies, usually with a cell phone, which have come a long way, where you're just happy to get the memory in frame quick enough. These days, I'm learning video editing on LumaFusion, how to use my first iPad to do these things, and that these videos, they take up a lot of space requiring more spent on storage. I also have a better appreciation for the time it takes to edit a video and that I need to improve my capturing of these scenes. I've learned a lot so far. It's fun making these videos that I get to share through YouTube, and hopefully you get something out of our odyssey of life inside this great country of ours, too. Welcome to Odyssey USA. Back in 2015, my wife bought me some concert tickets for a birthday present, and it was to go see Tesla, primarily. Um, I missed a concert when I was younger where my friends went to see them and I always wanted to see them and just never got around to it. Uh, they opened, surprisingly. Uh, I wish they had a longer set, but they sounded great. And then the next band was Foreigner. It wasn't the original singer, but the guy nailed it. And they had great sound. They put on a great show. The guy was 50 years old, come to find out. He was jumping around like he was in his 20s. It was crazy. Anyway, uh, Def Leppard was the main act. And I love the guys. I love that music. And it's one of my top playlists. It's in the rotation all the time. And I really wish I could have heard them sound better, you know. Uh, the sound guy did an awful job, it seems like, because uh, there was a whole lot of reverb. Anyway, it's just, I don't know, I know they can sound better than that. So it was a little disappointing, but other than that, great experience. That was the last time we were in this area. Uh, at the time, we'd never been to Iowa, so we just kind of went over the bridge real quick, just to say we'd been to Iowa before, you know, and um, it was a great trip and had fun. Hit camp and it's okay. Uh, I wish it was a little more level. And uh, my wife got an eight person tent, so their tent pad was on the small side, so we had to improvise. We're on a little bit of an incline, but we'll make it work. It's hot, so we're headed to fill up the tanks for the morning and we're going to get some ice for the cooler which we should have done earlier, but it just didn't happen. We're here at the hip camp where we are camped out in someone's backyard. That's how all this works. So let me show it to you. We've already unloaded and set up the tent.
So it's nice that it's tucked way back here. We're on a little bit of an incline, but we'll sleep with our heads on this side here. There are some mosquitoes. I need to go get the thermocell. But here's where we're staying tonight. And we have use of a restroom in the walkout basement there. Let's see how they do their first night without air conditioning. And it's a beautiful morning here at the hip camp. We are currently loading up and I'm drinking my cold Duncan coffee. Don't feel like pulling out the gear just yet. We want to get on the road and get to the Badlands. We've got about 10 hours in front of us at least. Well, I guess it wasn't too bad for the first morning. It took us about an hour and a half to get showered and packed up. I actually got up a little before five, so uh, Haley got in, started getting cleaned up about six o'clock. And then uh, Alina, after her, all the packing, and we're still figuring out uh, where to best put things. We have it pretty sorted out, but like something unexpected, like, okay, the Thermarest mattress pad, it doesn't quite uh, fit like it used to because when they come from the factory, uh, you know, all of the air is out of it. So it can make a difference when you were able to put it under the seat before, and now you can't necessarily put it under the seat without possibly damaging it. So, uh, we had to improvise and we're getting on the road to the Badlands. The girls are hungry. We want to stop for breakfast somewhere. Uh, I'm just going to get going and stop at the first place we see. We stop for breakfast at McDonald's real quick and check tire pressures. Had a couple that were off and we're about to get back on the highway. Want to take a guess what the number one crop of Iowa is? If you guessed corn, you'd be correct. Much of its economy is based on the production of corn and corn byproducts like popcorn, corn oil, corn syrup, corn meal, corn starch, and animal feed. About 90% of Iowa's land is dedicated to farming. Do you know what's in second place? In addition to corn, soybeans, and raising livestock, pork is Iowa's second highest grossing export. About 100 miles outside of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I've noticed since getting fuel in Iowa and then most recently in Minnesota, uh, I used to be pretty happy with the gas mileage that I got. 20 miles per gallon with 35s, 456s, Rubicon lift, uh, basically a stock Rubicon suspension. And uh, I'd get 20 miles per gallon. Now, I'm getting 17 and a half. The only thing I can think of, it might be, well, being in the area that we're in with all the corn and everything, we might be uh, seeing fuel with a higher ethanol content. That's what I'm thinking. Haley said I'm hungry. Would you like to reply? Yes. What do you want to say? Me too. Your reply to Haley says me too. Ready to send it? Yes. 
Okay, it's sent. We're about two hours away from the Badlands and we're gonna stop and get some late lunch at Corona Village Mexican restaurant. We like to compare Mexican restaurants to Gustavo's, a Mexican restaurant back home. So we're kind of foodies like that. We wrapped up our late lunch at the Mexican restaurant and I thought it was great. I had the chimichanga with picadillo which is a shredded beef and pork. My daughters both got a ground beef burrito with rice and beans. Kaylee thought hers was crazy, so she didn't really finish it. Uh, I offered her my chimichanga, but I think she just wasn't hungry anymore by then. Lena ate with no complaint. Well, it was okay. I recommend it. Uh, it was really nice. Customer service was good. Anyway, we are on our way to the Badlands. I needed to stop for gas real quick there in town before we left. And I noticed that they had 87 and 91 octane when I pulled up. But something better. They're ethanol free. So maybe I can get some of my gas mileage back because each gallon will have more BTUs. And uh, the comparable fuel with 10% ethanol mixed in. So. Hopefully that helps. Suddenly there's this very large river in the middle of South Dakota. It's kind of cool. I didn't know it was coming up or I would have caught a little more footage way back. But better than nothing. turn the camera back on because I didn't realize the landscape would change so drastically. I mean, east of the river is just flat. I just stopped recording like two minutes ago and I thought, well, okay, this is just temporary. No, I look at this. This is beautiful. This is just a tiny little taste of what we're going to see. I mean, just something like that tree over there, all by itself. Might be able to make it out on the right there, all by itself. It's like something out of a painting. It's like the old west to me. What do you think? Mm -hmm. 
on to the campsite. In our next episode, we break camp and start our way down Highway 240, as pictured here on this map, to hit points of interest along the way and finish up our exploration of the Badlands, including one little-known two-track trail that is in the adjacent National Forest. And lastly, the better-known Cheap Mountain Table Road. <laughs>